What's up, YouTube? So today I want to talk about something which I kind of discovered by accident, but after digging a little bit deeper into it, I kind of figured out a really cool trick to do this a little bit more predictively. So I'm not sure how to describe this, but during a live stream, I was kind of working on a transition between a break and a drop. And I got this lead sound to kind of pitch down to the point where it became its own rhythm. After a little bit of warping with the audio loop, managed to get it to kind of groove nicely and then drop into the kick and bass. So I'm going to show you a quick example of uh, the actual track that I made during the stream. The idea is that I want to try to create these more predictable rhythms that you can kind of glide into. I think I figured out the equation. So anyway, here's a quick example of the kind of thing that we stumbled on by accident. And then here is a quick example of what we're going to do today. So obviously it's a little bit simpler, but you can adapt it because it's more predictable. You can create any type of rhythms that are going to suit the track. So you could recreate a rhythm that already exists into the track and kind of morph between rhythm and lead. So this, like I said, pretty interesting technique. So without blabbering too much, let's dive in and have a look. Okay, so here I've got a, a kick and bass and a really simple lead that I've set up here in Phase Plant. So the idea here is we wanna basically have like a melodic lead. So I've got this MIDI already mapped out here. You can copy this if you want, but one thing to note is that we've transposed it here. So this is actually in the key of F, not in C. Um, and then here we want one long note at the end here. So we're going to kind of do this thing where the lead is going to come in and then here at the end it's going to pitch downwards to the point where it then becomes its own rhythm. So the kind of key idea or well, the trick here is to not use the analog oscillator. We want to use the wavetable and we want to make use of turning this harmonic off and then we're going to actually shift this to the frequency of the track. So of course, frequency is, is speed. And if we use a very low hertz value, we can actually kind of identify the tempo this way. So the, the way to do this is to use a calculator and to punch in the tempo of your project. In this case, it is 142. So we're gonna go 142. And so this is beats per minute. And the hertz value is beats per second. So how do we get beats per minute into beats per second? We divide it by 60. So if we take 142 divided by 60, we get 2.36. So this is the Hertz value that's going to give us the speed of the kick drums. So also then what we wanna do is say, for example, we want to uh, draw in a bar. What we would then do is divide it by four again. So then what we can do is we can punch in this value into the uh, shift over here. But what we wanna do is we wanna set up a modulator to shift it to that value. So over here, we can right click on the modulation and we wanna punch in the value over here. So let's say 0 0.5916666667. And so now what'll happen is this is going to modulate up. And also then what we need to do is we need to get this to modulate down to zero over here. So what happens when we tune this, uh, tune this macro up, it's going to turn off the key tracking because, these, because this harmonic is now gonna go down to zero. And then it's gonna slowly shift up to the cycle rate that we've set over here. 
Now the trick is to draw in some kind of uh, shape over here. But just to start with, let's just draw in a saw wave like this. It's done. And then let's see what happens here. So there are some effects that we can get to kind of accentuate that really low frequency sound, but we'll get to that in a moment. Here what we can do is we can draw in some, uh, some shapes. So let's say for example, we wanna do uh, a rhythm like, uh, let's actually say divisions of 16. So we can do like a rhythm like this one, do like a Euclidean rhythm. So now you'll notice here that the tone is obviously gonna change. We have slightly more of what sounds like an FM sound. But again, then when we, when we shift it downwards, it'll turn into more of a kind of rhythmic sound. Dun, 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 dun. So we may wanna just like adjust these uh, curves over here. Uh, in fact, I should have done that while we were drawing it originally because now it's all reset, but that's okay. Uh, we can just right click so that we've got sharper curves like this. And then we can use the distortion effect and a filter with a bit of resonance to remove any low frequency content. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make the sound a little bit more rhythmic and a little bit less tonal, hopefully. So let's just put that in like this. So you can see we've got like sharper cuts. What we can do is we can actually shift some of them in like this. Just so we have some rhythmic variations. So sometimes you'll get a bit of a ringy effect because of the way that wavetables are generated and the harmonics. Um, it's less so in the analog oscillator, but then the problem is you can't kind of fine tune your own rhythms and, and that kind of thing. So here what we can do is we can actually use the transient shaper and then turn the pump up and sustain down and turn the speed up. And we'll have a little bit less of a ringy effect that way. And we can actually duplicate this so that it's, uh, let's just put it on this lane and then have two of them that way we got like none of that kind of ring, but all click. The issue here is that when we have the flat tone with no macro, the transient shaper cuts out any of that sustain. So what we wanna do is we wanna use the mix over here so that when we have the flat tone, there's no transient shaper. And when we mix in the rhythmic element, we get the transient shaper. And so then the last thing we can do is we can just set this down to whatever kind of pitch range we need, like maybe minus 12. And this is not gonna be relevant to this pitch shift because we turn the harmonic off so it, gets, it no longer gets key track. Okay, so now what we can do is we can put in maybe a bit of like a low pass filter to sweep the sound in. And then we can set up a macro for this. Cool, and then maybe just to round the sound off a little bit of delay on the chain. Okay, so you might notice that when you do try to do the shifts, sometimes it's slightly out of time. The trick here is to wax it a little bit, you know, keep fine tuning and fine tuning until you get it as accurate as possible. You might want to use curves in the modulation because that's gonna change how the time shifts and then also just shift it slightly off and then just keep doing it until you get it to like sync up. You could also render it out and shift it a little bit then the problem with that though, is you can kind of hear that shift. So like in the original, that the kind of thing that we stumbled on, you, it doesn't kind of go very fluidly into that rhythm. You can kind of hear this shift into the rhythm uh, section. So anyway, the trick is to get this curve perfect. So we're gonna just keep uh, auditioning it until it sounds right. And then when you got it as close as you want it, what you can do then is bounce. 
because then you know it's always going to be the same. There's going to be no like modulations or anything in the project or the patch that might alter that uh, really nice time that you've kind of shifted in. So yeah, let's see the results of this. And then the trick to just top it all off and make it all uh, sound like everything was planned and everything just, you know, kind of slides into this uh, massive groove is to place drum sounds uh, on that same kind of groove. So I'm going to fast forward this part. I'm going to use probably mainly uh, UVI World Suite 2. And yeah, like I said, fast forward this part and then show you the final result. Awesome, that's about it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that like button. I will see you guys next time. Cheers.